Hi, this is Stella, and I'm back to paint some more. Right here, I'm prepping for one of the paintings, and this is the day before so that it has time to dry. I see that the maximum height is 80. If I bring a painting on 90, you know? Do you know what, I'm, what I mean? I think the last time we talked, I was initially going to bring two paintings to the art fair. But then I was asked to bring four instead, which I'm super excited about. So this way I'll have a whole wall. It's funny because I had a couple of work opportunities that didn't go through right before I got the offer for the extra paintings. So in the end, it all made sense that I was told to bring paintings because otherwise I wouldn't have time to actually do it. This is the morning after. I swear, it always takes longer than expected to set up everything you need for the space just to get ready to paint. What I could have done if I didn't have the time is that I could have brought paintings that I'd already made, but I opted to make new ones. For me, it's really important that there's a cohesive collection of paintings that make sense together rather than a mixture of different ones. I don't want them to have been made in different times with no clear thread between them regarding the meaning, and I'm very happy I ended up doing that. The only thing was, I only had a couple of days until I had to send in all the details of the paintings, including the ones that didn't exist. So, let's just say I had two pretty busy days ahead of me. This was the finished sketch with pencil. So I changed the clothes that I've already spilled painted on previously, so I'm better safe than sorry. And I can't keep making all of my clothes painting clothes just because I keep spilling on them. And this is what the outline looked like. I was so busy with painting that I forgot that I had to prep the other canvas for the other painting. Don't do this at home, folks. Don't be painting right above a carpet. Luckily, I realized and moved it. But this is what happens when you rush into things, including pouring paint onto the canvas, like there's unlimited paint in the world. And then I had to spend time correcting it later. I had so much left on the canvas and I had to scoop it all up. <laughs> I guess when you're in a rush, it just makes you make stupid decisions sometimes. But let's get back to painting. By the time I'd finished priming the canvas and taken a bit of a break, the paint had dried enough for me to continue. A 
you haven't seen the first two paintings that I'm bringing to the art fair, I have them in my last video and I'll link it here. I'm also making a whole playlist with all the videos related to the art fair, so this one will be included in the playlist. I was working on this painting all day up until the evening and you can probably see a bit of the light change slowly as it gets later and later throughout the day. At some point, my friend and roommate came back from work. If you're wondering about what language that was, that was Norwegian. In case you didn't know, I grew up in Norway from when I was a toddler and then I went to study in England and eventually moved to Barcelona. Now I've been living in Barcelona for the past six years. And if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen some clips of me speaking Spanish. But I was born in Mozambique. And that's actually the reason why I'm going to this art fair. It's because I've been represented by a gallery that represent artists from Portuguese-speaking countries. And if you didn't know, the official language in Mozambique is Portuguese. And the gallery that is representing me is actually based in Portugal. So that was a bit of my all-over-the-place background. I was thinking of having a Q&A at some point after I've surpassed 1,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe. And if you have any questions, let me know below because I'd love to see what you guys are wondering about. Okay, so it's a new day and it's time to set up the things again. For this painting, I had sketched out the outline in pencil the night before, so I started directly on the paint because by the end of this day, I had to send in all the information of both of the paintings, so better safe than sorry to just prep as much as possible I could the day before. So the other day I was listening to a podcast, it was Lewis House interviewing Ed Milet, and I completely recommend that interview. One of the things that stood out to me that I wrote down was, in life you're the most qualified to help the person that you used to be. And he used the example of a former alcoholic helping out recovering alcoholics. I really like the concept and I find it to be true in so many ways.
When I was younger, I was always drawing or sewing or painting. I was always creating in some way and I was super eager to learn. And I was encouraged as well. I got art supplies for my birthday. I was, for the most part, encouraged to do creative things. But creativity had always been seen as a hobby. We had art in school every year, but it was taken as a time for people to relax and not take things too seriously. It was kind of a break from school. Basically a time for us to practice our hobbies. Nobody ever really presented me with ideas of how I could really make it into a profitable business. Neither did I have enough knowledge to know where to look for, for that information. I don't think it really helps with the lack of representation that there was of artists in history books. And when we had history lessons for trained artists, it was from a very standard westernized perspective where art started with the Romans, basically. And you don't really need to be a historian to know that art existed in many different forms before that. And that there were so many other artists around the world. We never learned about Asian art, African art, Native American art, or even newer contemporary artists in general. And I can barely remember learning about any female artists in general. And I didn't know of anybody in my circle or family members that did art full time to prove me that it was possible. When you grow up not seeing yourself being represented in an area, you build up this unconscious thought that it's not possible because you haven't really seen anything that have proven that it is possible. So when I got to the age where I had to choose my career path, I think most of the creatives around me chose to go into media and communication studies, or architecture, or maybe graphic design if you were more daring. Because most of us were looking for a way to keep our creative spirit alive. But by also conforming to the social expectations of what an okay career path was. I ended up studying interior architecture and design, and honestly, I really liked the course itself. I learned a lot about time management and how to finish my own projects. I absolutely loved creating the visuals and Photoshop for the conceptual ideas. I found it challenging and fun to create architectural models with my hands. And the architectural drawings were time consuming, but overall it was worth it to be able to do everything else. But as I had heard from previous students that had graduated, student life was the time for experimentation and creativity. And when you got into the real world, you would expect to spend a lot more time on logistics and technical drawings. And they were right. When I ended up in an architectural firm, my creative side was screaming. And for some people, it's a perfect place to work. But I did realize that it wasn't really for me, which brought me into my quarter life crisis. And I think a lot of us go through this quarter life crisis when we realize that maybe what I studied and what I spent so much time on is not actually for me. I started chasing waters during quarantine. I was looking for a way to reconnect with my creative side. And as I had extra time, I gave myself a challenge to post every day. This way I could keep myself accountable to create and share. And during 
during that period, a part of me lit up again. And from trial and error, and by going with the flow, and turning around from loose ends, and by being flexible to try new things, I am now going to my first ever art fair in less than a week to exhibit and sell my paintings. And I am beyond excited for this experience. And I'm taking time to really enjoy the journey as well. And I know that my inner child is so incredibly proud of how far I've come. And is rooting on me not to stop and not to give up. Because never in her wildest dreams did she think that in some years she would be in Madrid in a professional art fair exhibiting her paintings. I hope you can find some way to make your own inner child proud. And it doesn't need to be a grand revolutionary way. Just doing something that you used to love doing growing up. Something that really lit a fire in you. Just experience that light sparkle within you once again. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, I want to thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my future videos. Until next time.